Ray Armstrong from Conquest here at Oricon 35. I'm here with Mr. Larry Elmore. Larry, how are you doing today? Fine, fine. How are you doing? I'm doing great. You have uh, obviously a lot of what created the D&D image in people's minds was a lot of your work. There was about uh, five or six of the, you guys in the beginning. Uh, easily. Parkinson, Caldwell, and myself. Uh, I'm losing anybody out. We was a during the '80s, the main like the heyday of KSR. We made mainly four major painters. Then Jeff Butler was our black and white guy. He did a lot of inks, and but well, we all did some inks too sometimes you know, for the interior work. But there was four major painters. Yeah. And uh, I was, I think Clyde Caldwell was like a month or two older than me, but I was one of the older ones. Age ran from uh, 22 to. 38, something like that, that little group of artists. And the covers, they put out so many modules, books, box sets, that it just, it, I mean, like, as a gamer in that time, which I was, you just look and, they, I mean, these things leapt off the shelves. I mean, you could just, the, the work, and it defined it. The, the game, of course, uh, it was a real conceptual, real inspires the reader's imagination, the player's imagination, but yeah. there needs to be that spark. And for you guys, you create a lot of that spark. I imagine well, the, one of the main reasons, I think, was we were consumers of our own products. We played D&D. &D. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so when we would do a cover uh, of whatever the adventure is supposed to be, like a module cover, we would try to make it exciting. Now, the only problem that got in our way is because is they, they, we had a hectic schedule. In other words, they wanted a lot of art. And sometimes they want a painting done in a day, and which you really couldn't do. You had to slap it together. We really hated that because... Uh, we know we couldn't do a good job to try to do an oil painting in a day or a day and a half. And uh, and we were since we were consumers, we'd think we wouldn't want to see a halfway done painting on a cover of something. You want a good one. And so it was a battle lots of times, like trying to buy more times and give me three days anyway, my God, to get something decent painted, you know. From some of the money men yeah. fighting with the artist, you know. Yeah. From an outsider looking in, it's impossible to think that these were done some of these were done in months, much less days. That blows my mind. Now this here is the complete Larry Elmore. If I'm not mistaken, you started this on Kickstarter, correct? Yeah, it's the Kickstarter book. That's and it was the most at that I guess I don't know the record still holds, but it it broke a record on the most backed fantasy book. Fantasy art book. And uh, it was um, it did a lot better than I thought, but it's a very big book, 336 pages full of art. Right now, we are just starting to ship it to the Kickstarter people. It's been a year working on this thing, and it's finally beautiful. got it in. Beautiful. And then I'll be selling some of them at conventions later. I just brought this one for people to see that, yeah. that did back me on Kickstarter. Like, there's a book. It's really right coming. Yeah. <laughs> it's really coming. Now, there's a. Uh, I'm sure everybody, and you probably get this a lot, people coming to you and saying their favorite work or their favorite piece. Yeah. There's one particular piece to me that it just, it's, it's, because of, it's because of the character, it's because of the writer, it's because of everything. I think the piece has an interesting story. It was a piece you drew for the cover of a book from a first-time author by the name of R.A. Salvatore. Yeah. Is that a piece I'm talking about? Yeah, it's uh, Crystal Shard is the name of the book. I've got a print of it here someplace. Um, it's the next page, I think, Jeff. Yeah, that. Yeah, I, actually, when I got that painting, I was, I was leaving TSR to go freelance. Keith Parkinson and I sort of left together and, and got the studio, uh, shared a studio. But that was this painting was still on my schedule and to do for that year. So TSR said, "Okay, you're leaving us, but we still need X amount of paintings done. We'll just pay you the freelance rate." So it's okay, so. So I started on this painting, and the book wasn't finished yet. So they only gave me like 200 pages, type written pages, you know. So you do get to read some of the so books. So I read everything, and I got a, it was about, it was just where they, the character was tracking down something, you know. And that's all I had, the book ended. I mean, it didn't end, he just hadn't had it written yet, okay. The finish, so I'm like, okay, I don't know what's going on, but I know they're tracking something, mm -hmm. so I just, did this painting with the main three characters. And it became, well, the book obviously was good because it sold a bajillion of them and, <laughs> and it launched his whole career and put him on the map. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and but, yeah, the painting was uh, 
I was sort of guessing at some stuff when I painted it. Wow, that's. I mean, when you read that, when you read that thing, did you think that that character? Because this is obviously Jim Stewart, who's gone on to be what the star of twenty, thirty yeah, books or Lord. something. You know, he's, he's he's almost like. like well, the here's what was funny at that time: a dark elf, mm -hmm. um, a drow. Mm -hmm. They weren't popular at all. I mean, when I was started painting him. And Keith was the DM. He ran our games. Yeah. We were in the oh, same that's studio. That's an awesome piece of knowledge. And Keith I Parkinson said, ran Larry Elmore's games. Yeah, he, yeah. And I asked <laughs> Keith, I said, what is a drow? And he said, I think it's some kind of dark elf. I don't know. Because nobody played them nothing. They yeah. were a very minor character from Monster Man. Mm -hmm. And so we had to get the Monster Man to look it up to see what a drow was. So they're black. I said, are they black or, or are they a, a, a black person? You know. Yeah. Or are they actually black, black, yeah. Yeah, like this? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, they're elves and they live underground and it's totally what we want. I don't know. So I painted him not knowing anything much about a drow. And then within two or three years or four or five years, drows all over the place. Yeah, you know? exactly. That's, the, that's the definition finally became to be established that they are black. Like yes. leather. Yeah. yeah, like black leather. Wow. But at that time, we didn't know if they were like a black person yeah. or actually black like leather. Black leather. Yeah, wow. Yeah, because those are covered. Because it, it didn't really say it. Has it ever been featured yeah. in a major painting? Yeah. So you had no idea. Wow. That's, so that was the first that's time a, a drow. I think Keith had done a couple of drow as interpretation in some module cover, maybe a little calendar. Because he sort of found them intriguing, uh, intriguing after we. I figure out what a drought was. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's an awesome yeah. anecdote. So that's clearly, you know, obviously one of my favorites. But uh, I'm sure you have a lot of people that come up to you and say, "This was, this was the piece that you yeah. know got me." What, what one do you think is either do you hear the most or your personal favorite piece from that? I from think that TSR. Yeah. The, the, there's two, I guess. It's the old red box DMD. That's stuck in so many people's minds. I've had a lot of people. They were like 12 years old and they saw this box on a shelf with this cover. Yeah. Didn't even know right what it was. They talked their mom into buying it. Yep. They got it home they figured, I don't Whoa, know what this is. Like, yeah, kind of weird know how to play game. <laughs> but they liked it so much, they, they learned, learned to play it. Yeah, yeah. And, and I just need to find four or five prints. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And, and I'll read these rules eight million times trying to figure them out. You know. But it was probably one of the most popular pieces. The other one is the first three Dragonlance covers. The Dragonlance covers. Yeah, yeah they those, were those people popular. really stuck with those. Well, you know, Larry, I'd like to thank you. I really appreciate you for your time today. Uh, this is great. I love that you come out to these events. I love your painting for uh, Emerald City yeah, with, yeah. Uh, with uh, Mount Rainier. With the Mount Rainier. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Thank you again for your time. Thank you. Thank you. you guys have fun.